Welcome, Explorer. Just when you think you're out, we pull you back in, don't we? But don't worry. We'll be here to keep you company as you traverse ever deeper into the liminal nightmare that is the back rooms. And hey, would you look at that? You're on level four. What a beautiful place. Breathe in the twin scents of fresh, warm copy paper and what smells faintly like burning rubber. Spread your toes on the shoe gray carpet. Take in the full glorious palette of gray on the many anodyne walls. There's a good reason that people call this level the abandoned office. It's funny in a bleak sort of way. Previous levels might have appeared more overtly spooky or dangerous, but this one sends a unique chill down your spine. You venture forth in eerie silence, keeping your distance from the wire-filled pillars that you know could be concealing all manner of freaky, aggressive monsters. There's an odd lump in your throat as you progress. You've been here before. Well, not here, exactly, but in offices just like it back in your native reality never in any position you were proud of. You were the intern, scrambling for coffee orders and trying desperately to remember the names of your superiors. You were the minute taker, dutifully recording notes as words you didn't understand or cared about flew past you a mile a minute. At the height of your power, you were just another numbers droid, inputting anonymous data into vast, incomprehensible systems for reasons that were beyond your understanding and pay grade. You never did anything of value and the pathetic paycheck you got at the end of every month only served to reaffirm this. Here on level four, you feel like you're walking through the carcass of a life you left behind, a reminder of the emptiness you ran from, and even the greater emptiness you've arrived in. You haven't even encountered a hostile entity here yet, and yet, you feel your pulse pounding with an even deeper kind of existential dread. The silence of the back rooms emphasizes the loudness of your thoughts. There are so many things you tell yourself you were running from when you first set your mind to entering the back rooms. Bills, taxes, obligations, alienation, purposelessness, pain, regret, debt, wasted years, a crappy home, a crappy job, no friends, no family, not living, not even really surviving, just being. But here on level four, you find yourself looking at things with a greater degree of clarity. Sure, all those things are problems, but they weren't the big problem, were they? The thing you were really running from was being you. And sadly, you're you here too. You try to push all those bleak thoughts out of your head. What does it help you to believe these things? The back rooms is all about survival. If you find yourself slipping too much into your own internality, it leaves you as a sitting duck for a truly dangerous creature, lurking out here in the mazes of hallways, electrical pillars, and abandoned dust-gathering cubicles. You have to be fully present and constantly aware of your surroundings. There's something oddly compelling about the environment of level four. Despite your own very personal existential baggage, this place is oddly more inviting than a lot of what you've seen. It doesn't have an endless drone or walls that are deadly to touch, nor nauseating damp carpets and a thick, toxic miasma hanging in the air. It feels like a snapshot of the year 1999, on the precipice of the millennia and the world changing forever, just without any of the people in it. That much can be expected of the back rooms, at least. You walk down darkened corridors and through doors marked in a language you don't understand or even recognize. You're smart enough to know the drill by now, explorer. You need to search for supplies, other friendly explorers trapped in here with you, and of course, an exit to the next level. You keep walking for hours, occasionally breaking to sit on a rotating office chair, just for your own amusement. The lack of entities on this level seems almost conspicuous, doesn't it? Especially after what an onslaught of vicious creatures these last few levels were. Not that you want to look a well-earned breather in the mouth. There's another thing about this level that you can't help but find a little peculiar. This is the first backrooms level you've seen that has actual windows here. Of course, some of them are completely blacked out, as can be expected, but some of them seem real, with actual light filtering through them. Does that mean there's a way out? 
or at least some kind of externality to an otherwise claustrophobic nightmare that is the back rooms. Tentatively not even daring to hope, you approach one of the windows. Something has to be exuding all this light, doesn't it? But outside, you see another impossibility that seems typical of this baffling alternate dimension. A spiral made up of thousands of other parallel windows built into an endless tesseract of walls. Down below, it stretches off into a kind of dark and unknowable infinity. Part of you wonders what'll happen if you'll pry the window open and jump out, but you're aware that it might go on for billions of miles. For all you know, there might not even be a bottom. You could be doomed to die of starvation mid-air. So perhaps an experimental jump isn't the best idea, you think. But this does open up a few different fascinating lines of inquiry. You know this is the view out of one of the windows. Who's to say it'll be the same out of the others? You've entered new levels through plenty of means before. No clipping, doors, elevators. Who's to say you don't enter level 5 by climbing through an office window on level 4? So you begin checking the windows. Again, many of them are totally blacked out. You consider trying to scrape away the paint at first then realize that in the back rooms, if the world itself doesn't want you looking at something, it's best to be compliant and heed its orders. You don't want to end up like one of the many thousands who would see something so terrible in the back rooms that it utterly shattered their sanity. You keep looking until you see something that catches your eye in the distance. Is someone standing behind one of the windows? It seems like a mere silhouette, but from the shape of it, it seems like it's a human, not one of the many vaguely humanoid monstrosities that littered the endless miles of the back rooms. And if it was possible to get onto the other side of some of these windows, then maybe your theory about escaping level 4 via one of these windows actually holds some water. There's only one way to find out. There's no time to waste. You make a run for the window, hoping the person on the other side will see you and open up. And as luck would have it, they do. The window starts to open and you see the person on the other side reaching out to take your hand and help you over the ledge. You're delighted. You couldn't be happier to leave this horrible level and all the painful memories it dredges up within you. That's when you hear someone scream, no. You're stopped in your tracks as the iron grips of several hands clasp around your body. You panic and begin to thrash around, worrying that some of the entities have gotten the jump on you. But in reality, the exact opposite has happened. You take another look at the hand reaching out of the window for you. It's solid black, like a living shadow, its clawed fingers extending towards you, grasping, clawing, beckoning. The ones grabbing you and pulling you away from its demonic grip, on the other hand, are all too human. They know about the treacherous window monsters that lurk on level 4, and they have no intention of letting you fall victim to their tricks either. When they pull you far enough from the window that the hand begins to recede back behind the panes, they loosen their grip and let you breathe. You'll sure as hell be bruised tomorrow, but at least this way, you're actually going to live to see tomorrow. Because your mama raised you right, you thank your rescuers profusely before asking them who the hell they are. They tell you that they're a scouting party from the major explorers group base Omega, the largest human faction in all of the back rooms. With them, you're in safe hands at the very least. Once you've gotten over the shock of yet another near-death experience, they help you up and escort you to Base Omega. It's heavily fortified, despite largely being made of discarded cubicle pieces and office furniture, and surrounded by a sizable force of major explorer group soldiers, wheeling everything from machetes to assault rifles. Your saviors tell you that this is the second largest base that the group operates in all of the back rooms, and because there are relatively few entities on level 4, a large number of humans congregate there. It's a relief to know that even in an environment as terrifying and utterly inhospitable as the back rooms, the human race, or at least pockets of it, can still find a way to thrive. You're offered food and plentiful almond water. As you sit with a group of fellow explorers eating, drinking, and swapping war stories, you decide to pose a question you've been wondering for a while now. What's the deal with almond water? Rather than reeling off into some bad imitation Seinfeld spiel, a fellow explorer tells you that almond water is more than just a refreshment, it's a lifesaver. Not only will it stop you from dying of dehydration and malnutrition, but it will also boost your immunity from the aggressive pathogen that turns you into a wretch. 
In some cases, the chemical content of almond water even seems to repel certain backroom's entities, meaning it can save your life in a tense situation if you don't have a working weapon on your person. As you receive this fascinating lecture, you make a mental note to grab a few extra bottles of almond water before you leave. Wait, you want to leave? Asks another one of the explorers. <laughs> Level 4 is one of the safer levels, especially here at Base Omega. It gets so much worse from here. Why would you want to descend to even more dangerous levels? You sigh and tell them it'd be hard to explain. You just have too many bad memories here. Nobody questions you further. While some get to the back rooms by accident, all those who came here by choice know better than to question another person's reasons. When you finish your meal, you ask a local guide at Base Omega to take you to the exit. You're ready to move on. A small group with flashlights and weapons leads you to a long, dark corridor not far from the base, terminating in a glowing green sign that seems to suggest an exit, even though you can't seem to understand the lettering. You gulp and walk forwards, wondering if this is right. Maybe you should listen to the other explorers. Maybe it would be best to just stay here, come what may. Surely the past is something you can come to terms with. Then again, if that was in the cards, would you have ever come to the back rooms at all? You take a deep breath and walk through the door. Welcome to Level 5, Explorer. Want to stay tuned for the next exciting exploration into the back rooms as we delve deeper and deeper into this liminal abyss? Be sure to subscribe to The Back Rooms Explained and turn on notifications so you never miss another expedition. Now go check out the next level, Level 5, The Terror Hotel, for more information on surviving this uniquely terrifying place.